All right, let's uh, run over the setup because it's a little bit complicated. First, we have our chlorine generator. We've got TCCA in there. Hydrochloric acid, uh, somewhat diluted to about 15%. We've got calcium chloride in here just to dry the chlorine, which is a bit ironic seeing as it's like basically raining at the moment because, you know, it was hot yesterday when I was trying to do the, uh, the really cold chemistry and today when I'm trying to do the dry chemistry, it's raining, so, you know, the weather never works in your favor. So that comes into here. This is just an empty flask for either suck back or, you know, the other way. You just need a dead flask in the middle here always. The Teflon tubing comes to here, get into here. Um, this is a dry ice ethanol bath to keep it nice and cold. And then I've got this condenser here to try and trap some of the vapors because the even though it's like not boiling, is as the gas bubbles through it, it'll naturally pick up a lot of of the liquid and you want to try and condense that back down. I'm going to chuck some dichloromethane in the flask here, probably at 50 mils because that glass uh, nozzle doesn't quite reach the liquid level and hopefully the dilution with the solvent will stop over chlorination somewhat. Um, so it's a bit of a complicated setup but should hopefully work. You, you think it'll work? Yeah, it's, it's raining. <laughs> Alright, and to check whether our thing actually survived the night Oh, it's still dry ice, so that's a good sign. Yeah, looking good. Looking good. Alright, everything's set up. Let's get more chlorine coming through. I just tested it just before but now I can actually have a go at actually doing the reaction. And that's going straight out of the condenser. <laughs> Jesus. Maybe I'll make the ice bath as cold as I can before I do any more chlorine. In terms of uh, stoichiometry here, we measured the amount of isobutene we had and it was roughly 20 grams which corresponds if assuming each atom of chlorine we generate is able to chlorinate a molecule so each uh, dichlorine is able to chlorinate two different uh, molecules of isobutene then we would need 14.6 grams of TCCA I mean that's assuming 100% efficiency too so I put in 30 grams of TCCA and the amount of hydrochloric doesn't matter we'll just run it until it doesn't generate any more chlorine so I don't know how long that'll take but hopefully not forever Man, it's raining quite a lot. Oh, it's making it hard to get the temperature down because it keeps raining into my fucking ethanol bath. But I don't know if it's working. I have no way of knowing if it's working or not. But, you know, you, you got to stand in the rain for something in life and fucking it's this, apparently. All right, the coronation's been going for about two hours now. The sun's finally out. Uh, the rain stopped, which is great. We've used up all our TCCA. Uh, we know that because I added some more TCCA to it and um, the bubbling kicked off again because it had stopped. We have a couple of signs this is actually working. First one being that um, there's quite an offensive smell to the liquid now when I take out a little bit of it, which is good because we know methyl chloride, um, methyl chloride, has, has really quite an offensive smell to it. And it smells, it's distinctly different from chlorine. I mean, it's sort of chlorine-y, a little bit sweeter, like um, a marshmallow that's been cooked in uh, a war gas. I, I don't know. Also, the liquid's taken on a bit of a coloration. It's a little bit greener than it, than it was previously, because it was just a clear liquid. But now I think it's got a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm basically out of dry ice anyway. What we might do is we might just let it warm up to, you know, 8 degrees and see if anything starts boiling off. Um, minus 8 degrees that is. And if it does, then we can just, we can just keep the chlorination going a bit longer. But I have a hope that maybe nothing will um, start boiling off because our product would have all been converted. Alright, the ice bath temperature is now over 6 degrees and nothing is really boiling off it. So, I think we're there. Possibly. And we have to have a go at distilling this. 
dichloromethane should come off first, then our product, hopefully, our chlorinated product. Um, but let's uh, get it out of this uh, ethanol bath and see what it looks like. Well, this is the part where I say it smells bad, but it's the smell of success. But honestly, this is one of the worst things I've ever smelled. It's not even like you can smell it. You try and inhale any of it, and your body just reacts in pain, and you just flinch before you can even really, like, get a grip on it. I mean, I thought it was, you know, kind of okay, but a little bad before, but now, now we've got it like this, it's, it's pretty bad. I was hoping to distill it inside, because I, and then I'm out of the weather, you know, but, um, that's not gonna happen. We're gonna have to distill it outside. All right, set up for simple distillation, and, and we're running it. <laughs> of course, the thing I love about dichloromethane is just how fast it can distill, and how easily you can distill it. You can just put the water bath there, just boil the kettle, put the water there. So our product methyl chloride um, distills over at 71 degrees. 71 to 72 is the literature boiling point, so we should be able to take the water bath, you know, where is it now? 69, yeah, well, while we're stilling off lots of the dichloromethane, it doesn't matter too much. But then we'll hold it at 50, 60 odd, so all the dichloromethane will come off and hopefully we have some liquid remaining after that, which we can hopefully, is enough to distill, you know? Uh, so this way we recover all our dichloromethane, and this is what I do for most procedures, I recover the dichloromethane. And assuming it's not too tainted, assuming it doesn't smell like, you know, a war gas, then we should be all right. Well, most of the times, especially because it's such a low boiling thing that it, when it comes over, most of the time it's good enough to just rebottle. Well, the temperature's dropping uh, in terms of the distillation. Nothing else more is distilling over, uh, even though the water bath is at 66 degrees here. So, we've distilled off all the dichloromethane. However, there's still quite a bit of stuff in the flask. So, good news, good news all round. So, what I'm going to do is just let this go for a little bit long. I really want all the DCM out. And possibly clear this bit that's got trapped here. Uh, switch over the flask and then we'll um, put the temperature up just another 10 degrees or so. I'm so confident that this is our product, but I'm just it's just not distilling very well. I, I think it's possibly because it's such a small stir bar. I'm going to have to add some, uh, maybe just some sand to help it boil. So I might let it cool down just a little before I add the sand, otherwise it might all boil at once. I generally find the sand really helps it boil a lot more. Because it's kind of going, but it's just... It's just nothing's coming over. Alright, the sand is in. The smell was overwhelming when I opened that up. Hopefully we get a bit more of a consistent boil now. Why well, it just isn't boiling. Maybe it's not our product, but come on. I can't believe in you. The water bath temperature is into the mid-90s now. Um, or early 90s, I guess. And still, we're not really distilling anything. It's still just having that quiet boil away there. I mean, you know, like it is boiling, it's just not quite there. I think I might have to just step up the uh, heating a little. I'm going to switch the heat hot plate out for the heating mantle. Uh, as soon as we've got the sand in there, we don't really need the stirring. Um, and then hopefully we can actually, because even if it's not a product, we've got to work out what the, what the boiling point is so we can determine stuff later on. I've never had something like this happen to me before. You can see it boiling in the flask. And it's been doing that for a while. The oil bath temperature is like 140, but nothing comes over. I just can't get anything to... no temperature reading or anything. It's... I just... I can't... I don't understand why it's not working. I've spent all my day today trying to just bloody distill this thing. What's going on? It is distilling a tiny bit. Ah, uh, where are we at? What's the temperature reading? About 60 degrees here. So, I don't really think that's a good reflection of the actual temperature, just because there's not much vapour, but... I don't know, we're going to get a tiny bit of pure product and then we've got whatever's left in this flask which um, just really won't boil too much. Perplexing really. It's as if there's a small amount of low boiling stuff in amongst this, a bunch of high boiling stuff which is making it really hard for it to, or the, the small amount of low boiling stuff to boil over. That's what it's like. It's just surprising because I don't know what could be possibly be in there that's high, higher boiling point than like, you know, the oil which is at 180 degrees at the moment, you know. All the byproducts of the, the reaction, they, they, most of them boil under at least 110. So unless we've really, really done something strange like uh, polymerized it maybe 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 polymerized it all. That that could be a thought, but 
strange. It's very strange. So if we have a look at our distillation flask now, we can see it's a horrible colour. It's gone all kind of, I mean, it's, it's still a thin liquid, but it's gone all black and looks like tar. So I, I, I think polymerization is, is a reasonable suspect, but the problem is I don't know how to, how to stop that. I don't know whether it polymerized during the chlorination. Maybe I had too much UV light, you know, just because it was in the sunlight, it could have triggered free radical nonsense and that thing, or maybe during the distillation itself. I mean, we managed to get some product. It's about two and a half grams. You know, I'm not fully convinced this is our product because of the boiling point. All right, our target compound is flammable. So let's see if our, our distillate is flammable or not. That is a dreadful smell. Oh man, oh that's cutting through. Oh Jesus Christ. This is some of the liquid that was in the distillation flask, so we're gonna see if this is flammable as well. It is, but stubbornly. The reason we wanna check the density is, ideally we want it to be methyl chloride, which is a density of 0.91, which is less than water, and a lot of things, a lot of the products should also be uh, have a density less than water. So if it sinks, you know, we've got something different than what we should, are expecting. All right, interesting. In, interestingly, that seems to have a density greater than water. Yeah, I don't quite know what we've distilled over, but it's not really our product. All right, let's also check the density of this uh, raw reaction raw distillation stuff in relation to water. Yeah, you can see there that's definitely gone to the bottom. It's not miscible, but it's definitely um, heavier than water, which is uh, not what we want. Where to improve with this? That's a real question, because the chlorination seemed to be fine. Maybe I over-chlorinated it. Maybe I could do a lot less the chlorination. So I'm, I'm looking forward to suggestions. I mean, seeing as it didn't work, it means I have to do the first step again, which is, you know, a lot of effort. <laughs> you know, it takes me nearly two hours just to get the dry ice, let alone do any of the experiments. So yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna do this again unless I'm, I'm certain it's gonna really work, because it was, it's been a whole weekend project. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, what was nearly at a six? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a bit, a bit pissed off.